Now, shortly after that, she actually met um, Dr. King. Dr. King was the son of, of um, a minister who played a very important role in the Baptist uh, convention. And though she knew him, she did not know young Martin Luther King. So he came to the church uh, one, one Sunday and she met him and they became instantly kind of, you know, admir ad admirers of each other. She would find out that he had a mission when he came there. He, had, he knew who she was and he told her, I am on a mission. I am, uh, there's things going on in this world, in this country that I am, you know, I'm committed to changing. So the civil rights struggle is what I'm all about. And I need people who will help me with this. And I need young people to help me, but I need people who can be patrons, financial patrons, and people who are seen by others as having a voice. And he just told her he needed her. He also was the very first person who made her believe that she had a responsibility uh, to making the world better. She knew that her role in life was a gospel singer and that was what God wanted her to do, but she had never thought about the fact that she might be able to contribute to the world in a different way. So it was Martin Luther King uh, Jr. who convinced her, uh, yes, your voice, it's invaluable, we need that, but we also need you. We need you to take a stand. We need you to commit to civil rights. Um, and I need you as a patron, I need you. So they became long, long time friends until his death. They were very, very close. They grew closer, it seemed, over time. When he would come to Chicago, she would put him up at her house. They, she would cook dinner uh, for all of his, comp, you know, the people that came with him. Uh, all the musicians uh, loved coming to her house and they'd all uh, converge there together with Martin Luther King and have an amazing time. So they absolutely, he was, he was, he meant a lot to her and she meant a lot to him. Uh, one of the first things that he asked her to do was to be a part of the, uh, the, the bus strike down in Mississippi. And she did, she went down and she sang at one of their fundraisers and it was, you know, filled, you know, to the program, everybody came, but there was also Ku Klux Klansmen uh, circling the church while they were there. And Mahalia had never uh, experienced anything like that. So that kind of, that threw her. And she was ready to come back to Chicago pretty quickly after that. But she continued, she continued to open up politics for uh, Martin Luther King in Chicago. Chicago was one of the um, close, you know, more, more closed places as far as politics was concerned. It was relatively, um, I would say conservative, even though people were Democrats, they were not open to including a lot of people from out of state. And definitely a lot of uh, the leadership uh, wasn't open to someone like a Martin Luther King, who they saw as bringing trouble into uh, their city which, you know, he did, but it was good trouble, as, as uh, the congressman said. 